So uh, this is an episode of the Richard Lewis Show. I don't know what fucking number it is because we've recently switched all the podcasts around and the Richard Lewis Show is now going to become interviews only and the Richard Lewis Show that used to be a ranting and raving about politics is now I hate it here. So whatever. Uh, but <laughs> i got a great guest, someone I'm psyched uh, to have on the show because I've been following his YouTube videos for, for a while now. He's been in the game a lot longer than some people might think. Uh, it's Vito Casualdi. I'm sure you've been recommended at least one of his videos uh, if you follow YouTube. He is the guy behind The uh, Last Jedi is a, a complete cinematic failure that seems to get recommended to everyone. Yeah, uh, people really get mad about that being in their recommended list all the time. It's on 9.2 million views, dude, at the moment. Uh, yeah, well... That's the funny thing about that video is when I made it, I was like, ah, it'll get like 20,000 hits. So I don't yeah. got to like, you know, worry about what I say about people. And then I say all these horrible things about Ryan Johnson. I'm like, oh, now I feel kind of bad. <laughs> I think everyone's dunked on him at the moment. He's got think... millions of dollars. He'll be fine. Yeah, exactly. He can cry himself to sleep with that. Uh, but well, I guess I guess that's a good place to start, right? I mean, um, having a YouTube video kind of blow up like that, Like, especially when you've been a creator for a while and you've been uploading stuff to YouTube for, you know, for like nine years or something. Yeah, I mean, I've the weird thing about me is that I was always bouncing around from place to place because, I don't know, for some reason I never got in the spirit of just being fully independent. I was always mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, yeah, I'll get somebody who likes my stuff and they'll pay me and, you know, uh, pay me a salary and I'll make videos for them. So, you know, I've made videos... Uh, I used to work for a game website called Game Zone. Mm -hmm. I did a little bit of stuff for Destructoid. Then I worked for a game publisher called Midnight City. And uh, all of those were tremendous failures. <laughs> uh, and I eventually, and then finally, I'm just like at the bottom of my rope at the, my lowest point. I'm like, ah, I just start a YouTube channel and see what happens. And immediately it works. I'm like, damn it. Why didn't I do this to begin with? Why did I trust anybody else to uh, make my life work? No, this is, this yeah. That's the thing, though. Sure. People don't realize, you know, the the uh, I, I say it all the time. It's like, you know, especially if you're an aspiring like games journalist, right? Or you want to do content. Why aren't you doing yeah. content on your free time on your own shit? You know, building that up. You know, you look at like all the guys who've been successful, at, like, you know, broke away from the escape. It's like, you know, Jim Sterling's a good example. Right. Yeah. Well, that was the thing is when I started get so like. What's interesting is I really wanted to get into game journalism when I was uh, in like high school and stuff. And I actually even started writing for some websites in high school. I remember I got hired by this one site called Game Forms to run their letters column. And they're like, wait, you're 16? Like after they had already hired me? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm blowing off my homework to write your letters column. And they're like, well, all right, whatever. Uh, so yeah, I, was, I always wanted to get into game journalism. And back then, I mean, there was no real you know big youtube community or anything like that this is what 10 more than 10 years ago maybe 15 years ago yeah so and i'm, I'm always just i i feel like i'm stupid because i'm always slow to recognize trends and where things should be because i should have gotten on youtube you know back at the beginning there was no nothing really stopping me i'm just an idiot uh but now i mean luckily i mean i thought that youtube you know nobody wanted any new creators everybody was happy with what they got but it is an evolving ecosystem and there's always room for new people and the old people kind of fade away and uh so yeah i've been very lucky that i'm having my little flash in the pan moment and then eventually everyone will get tired of me and make videos called what happened to Vito's channel mm. uh, that stupid idiot so yeah i'm having fun it's working out yeah well look i want to i want to talk a little bit about the last jedi video because uh I, I, that's probably it. that's going to be the gateway <laughs> drug to veto right like the, for most people um yeah, yeah i mean i agree with you by the way i want i want to say this uh the, the film is objectively terrible in so many ways and i've had this conversation before and i'm not a huge star wars fan you know i, I enjoyed the movies as a child and then i go yeah. out of them And, and, and never really thought about them. I watched the prequels when they came out bit by bit, thought they were hilariously bad. And I wasn't even, I had, <laughs> I had like no strong feelings for this like new trilogy, right? I, I don't right. know if that describes most people, but anyway. Well, I was, yeah, I was in a similar boat, honestly, is that, you know, I loved the movies as a kid. Uh, I still think A New Hope is just one of the just greatest hero's journey tales ever told. And I sure. do often look at A New Hope as like, just an incredible movie and worthy, worthy of studying. But, uh, you know, the rest of the movies, uh, especially those prequels, the prequels just, yeah, took me out of Star Wars. I was like, I don't, I don't care anymore. This, this universe is kind of ruined for me. 
Uh, but then Force Awakens, before it was coming out, I was just seeing, you know, like the, you know, J.J. Abrams was making it, and there was all this cool promotion for it, and, you know, all the screenshots look cool. And I'm like, oh, oh, man, maybe Star Wars is about to get really good. Mm. And uh, then it didn't. <laughs> I started getting back into Star Wars. I'm like, it's a, yeah, all right, Star Wars again. And it uh, quickly fell apart. Were you a Force Awakens fan? Uh, you know, not really. I, I, I went to see the movie like twice. So I saw it like almost immediately afterwards, just in case. Like, first time I watched it on a date, right? Yeah. I dragged to it by, the, with it by this uh, chick that, you know, wanted to see it. So I was like, okay, I'll come with. I wasn't really paying attention because I didn't really want to watch it, you know, and uh, whatever. But then I thought, I, you know, I saw flashes where it was like for, mo for a moment, I was like dragged into the movie, you know? So I was like, yeah, there must be something there. And then I went back and watched it and it really became apparent how it was like a beat for beat, essentially a remake of A New Hope. Like it was very abundantly yeah. clear once I sort of watched it and, and engaged with it. And I thought that's not the worst thing you can do. But I do hate these like soft reboots that we get where yeah. it's essentially the same movie, but worse. Well, I see value in, uh, I, I do think that there's something interesting about redoing it uh, in, in a way that would be interesting. For me, the big problem was, and maybe I went in tainted, but I don't think so, is that I had read a few things going into the movie where they're like, yeah, it's all right, but that Ray character uh, is just, a Mary Sue yeah, out the, the Mary gate. Sue argument, yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I was skeptical because I'm, I'm the kind of guy, you know, I hear a lot of this griping online where they're like, oh, the SJW is ruining all the movies. And I go, eh, some of the movies, not all the movies, <laughs> you know, some, a select number. But I, I, it's Star Wars. I'm sure you guys are blowing it out of proportion. There's no way. And I went in, I'm like, oh, no, oh, no. Because yeah. literally, I'm like, I'm like, what are her flaws? What are her, you know, what does she need to overcome? What is her motivation even? And I guess the only through line for motivation in these movies has been, well, she doesn't have parents and that makes her sad. I'm like, yeah, that's not really that compelling though. No, no, it's <laughs> and it not. It doesn't excuse her lack of any real struggle or trial in these movies. But the whole, the whole thing as well with uh, just the, uh, I, like, I, you know, it, it was, it was a disaster in, in terms of structure because, you know, by the time we get to the last Jedi, it's like, I don't know who gave Ryan Johnson this mandate to sort of come in and be like, you know all that stuff J.J. Abrams set up? It was cliched. It was hackneyed. That's Star Wars, essentially. Now, uh, yeah, you've got yeah. complete carte blanche to tear it to fucking shreds. And all of the storylines he set up completely destroy them, safe in the knowledge that he's coming back to do the, the third movie. I, I just don't understand who signs off on that. Because it just yeah. creates this dissonance between the... Like a, t a tonal shift between the two films that's completely irreparable. I mean, what I think happened, and, and you almost want to say it's noble in a way, is that Kathleen Kennedy got stars in her eyes and she said, I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to create the next Hollywood wave of directors. I don't know, what, what did they call it when the first uh, wave showed up? And it was George Lucas, Steven Spielberg. Uh, oh, yeah, I know you told The guy who directed, that. you know, yeah. Godfather or whatever else. Yeah. And they all kind of oh. showed up at once and yeah. upended the studio system. Yeah. And Kathleen Kennedy got stars in her eyes. She said, I'm going to empower a new generation of directors and we're going to create this new, you know, cultural wave that, you know, subverts the existing blockbuster everything, yeah. yeah i mean we're in an interesting point where these blockbuster tentpole movies it's like what can you do with them how can you get creative with them yeah it's fair i think her idea was let me give it to ryan johnson it'll do something crazy and yeah. you're like i respect your desire to subvert the you know boring hollywood blockbuster that you know with the exact a to b point but the way in which you did it was clearly just bad yeah. just wrong in so many ways uh and i even look you know like i'll even give ryan johnson some credit as i look at some of the themes he was going for you know the idea that heroes can fail and whatever else and i'm like yeah those are good themes you just communicated them in an obnoxious idiotic mm -hmm. way that yeah. made everybody miserable these yeah. movies are so miserable i want to see luke skywalker happy he earned a little bit of happiness by being a good guy, yeah. overcoming the dark side, you know? And now it's like, yeah, you know what you do when you struggle to defeat the dark side? You end up in a hut alone and all your friends are dead. I'm like, well, then why be the good guy? If the good guy, if this is what he gets, then there's no point in being a good guy, apparently. It's miserable. No, it is. I hate it. 
Yeah, I, I, it, it, it was tough. I mean, listen, I, I, again, I, I wasn't like super strongly attached. And I knew, I mean, for example, like Harrison Ford was only coming back to be killed off. That guy straight doesn't give any fucks anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, him and Bruce He's Willis. like, for the, lo- for the love of God, please kill me. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure he says his... that in real life yeah. all the time as well. Uh, <laughs> but, but, it, but that's why he's always trying to crash planes, you know. But yeah. but, the, <laughs> but the, he's got a suicidal streak in yeah, him. Yeah, you know, he doesn't Poor him. Harrison. Yeah, but God bless him. Uh, God love him, though, as well. Great, great, great actor. He's, he's a great man. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I, I expected them all to die. I mean, not Princess Leia to, you know, literally die, although, you know, all that coke what Carrie Fisher was a point? time bomb. I mean, yeah, that was, you know. Yeah. And, and, and I, but I expected them to be written off. But again, like, the way in which it was done was like, fuck. And then, you know, the whole arc with Luke didn't really work as, like, a concept. And, you know, he, he's like a jaded asshole. And then he decides to come back to sort of like get a, pull a swift one on his former student and all this nonsense. Like, right. It, yeah, it was just, uh, it, and I won't even get into the logistics of how could Kylo Ren, who's so force attuned, not detect a force ghost? Like, whatever. <laughs> it's not worth well, it. I mean, there's plenty of videos with, for that. That arc with Luke is just clearly done too quickly. Sure. Like, you can't show me Luke and be like, Oh, he's a depressed, whatever, old man, and blah, 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 blah. And then an hour later, it's like, ah, he's back, and he's doing, you know, he believes in something again, whatever else. I'm like, that, I think, first of all, I don't even think you needed to kill Luke, and I would have left Luke alive, and I I, I see no value in killing off his character. I I, I don't understand. I mean, I I guess guess a writer sits down, and he goes, I got to kill somebody, you know? And there, there's actually an old uh, conversation somewhere between Lawrence Kasdan, who wrote uh, Empire and Jedi, mm-hmm. and George Lucas. And uh, Kasdan's going to George, and he's like, we got to kill somebody. We got to kill Han Solo. And George Lucas is like, why? Why is that a rule? Like, you don't have to kill anybody. Because for me, so- I was like, I think Luke should have survived and just ended up being like the old Chinese master at the top of the hill. Yeah. Where you got a uh, Ray running the Jedi Academy, and occasionally Luke pops his head out, and he's like, "Hey, everything going good? You guys need some sage wisdom or something?" Mm. I don't know, man. I just I did not understand killing him off. It was it was sad, but it wasn't even sad in a good way, you know? Yeah, I, I not like I, emotionally yeah. resonant sad. No, I don't think. Did you feel anything when any of these characters died? All three of them. Well, yeah, but I mean, but uh, nothing. It's- Especially in the Last Jedi, because understand that the sacrifice comes. Well, the sacrifice comes after uh, what should have been uh, 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 Finn's uh, sacrifice, and and so it, it was already building up to what would have been a, a sensible arc and a big emotional yeah. story beat, and then fucking Rose happens, uh, <laughs> and in what is like, oh god, the whole thing's just awful. Like it's just, it was just awful. So by the time Luke died i said dude i want to die as well this movie fucking sucks like i want to check out you know right what's, with you it. know what's funny is that is the only time in any of those three movies that i truly felt a real emotion was mm. re- when finn was like yeah when he's career i'm gonna do i'm the, gonna yeah. do this yeah and, and i i was sitting there and i was like okay ryan johnson you did it yeah you 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 have made a bold storytelling decision to take a main character and just kill him, which takes serious balls to just kill off the guy who's on the poster in the second movie mm-hmm. out of nowhere, mm-hmm. does his duty for the resistance, and then he gets knocked out of the sky yeah. by the Asian girl. And I'm like, ah, no, you had it. You had me. You had me, you bastard. Yeah. Why did you abandon? Ugh. I mean, ugh. and then you go, oh, right, because it's a Hollywood blockbuster movie and you can't kill off the young, whatever the hell character because you got to sell more action figures. God. Well, I, I think John so Boyega would have, would have probably liked it, given all the shit that he got into. He would have had a great, yeah. You know. He would have had a great end. Yeah. He would be forever remembered as a noble character. It's better than where he ends up at the end of this movie, where you're like, who, what, what? He's a jet. He has force powers, but like they're stupid, and you can figure out what spaceships are turned on. How is that useful? Like it's it's nonsense. And again, I'm a huge baby. Like, I watch the stupidest movies, and I just start tearing up for no reason. I was watching, like, Terminator, and the theme song came on at the beginning of Terminator, and I was, like, tearing up. And I'm like, my God, what a franchise, you know? 
for some stupid reason, just was bringing back all these thoughts of watching the Terminator movies and whatever. It, else. It, and obviously, by what a franchise, you mean the first two movies and not <laughs> yeah, like yeah, the, the, next the actual eight. franchise. Yeah, exactly. Not the garbage. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it was, but and I also bring up, you know, right, watching uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the blue guy whose name I forget half the time. Was it yeah. Yondu? Yeah, Yondu. I cried yeah. like a bitch. I was just sobbing in the theater like, no, you can't kill the blue guy. I love him. And then yeah, they have man. that funeral and everybody's united and you know, memorial to this guy and the lights are going off. I felt more for this character who I barely know anything about than the death of Han, Luke, or Leia. That's insane. How do you screw your movie up so bad that I just, Luke's fucking Skywalker dies and I'm just sitting there going like, yeah, all right. I mean, eh, I, I, wrong, I, I, I do love... Wrong. I do love Michael Rooker as well. He's such a fucking cool actor. Oh, yeah. Had such a crazy career and been in so many different films. Like, it's actually really good to see him in one of these kind of like big blockbusters because you know he's making paper because <laughs> they're selling action figures of this motherfucker. You oh, know? yeah. Like, he was the best thing about the favorite. that first season of The Walking Dead that Frank Darabont did and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was so good in that. It's good to see him getting. You always love when those guys, you see him in a big movie and you go, all right. Uh, gonna pay for that pay for your new house or pay off that mortgage or something yeah. good for you buddy and i still remember him playing henry lee lucas and portrait of a serial killer oh man that's so, a, yeah that's so he's a while a, back yeah he's a he's a hell of an actor he's been around a long time but so anyway uh, the, the the question i really wanted to ask i guess was when you threw out your critique of of the last jedi which obviously i mean I think a lot of people really felt the movie was a letdown. Were you expecting it to become this like weird political hot potato? I, so when I put, I put it out about six months after the movie came out. So there was already a little, there was already the backlash going on. Cause I wanted to wait for it to come out on DVD. Cause everybody else's reviews were like them talking about the movie while playing footage of Star Wars Battlefront 2. I'm like, I want to pull the actual scenes and show off the movie. So mine was yeah. a little late to the game. Um, I, I can't remember if all of the political stuff was there, but it seems like a lot of, a lot of the criticism kind of hit at the same time as mine. It kind of like randomly, everybody got the same idea to be like, I want to talk about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. And I think that just like all the waves of like detailed criticism coming out kind of sparked this backlash from, I mean, I hate to say it. I, I can't understand liking that movie and being an intelligent person. Like, it's just, it baffles my mind. So a lot of stupid people who are mad at the movie that they had championed as, oh, it's, it's so incredible and it empowers these female characters. And I'm like, it does a great disservice to the female characters. Did you see what happened to Phasma? She got her ass whooped. Yep. thrown down a yep. i want phasma i do want great female characters i wanted phasma to be a, a great warrior who doesn't get her ass what a what a waste of a great actress as well yes Crucially. that's the thing that's crazy is people go you hate women i go i don't hate women i'm I'm directly arguing for strengthening their characters uh rose tico as played by kelly marie tran mm. you could have done something with that character that i, I think i would have loved but you kind of made her goofy <laughs> she did the same thing that you did to finn you made him goofy you know, yeah. comic relief for some reason. There, there was nothing there that it, it connected to me. I don't know. Maybe it connects to someone else. So, so these accusations that everybody who hates the movie hates women, hates black people. No, I just want to see better written women and in, in black people. And I hate the white people in the movie too. Everybody in the movie's bad. It's got nothing to do with your dang identity. Okay, it has to do with a, with a piss poor script. Um, but it's very easy to if you like the movie or you're one of these. I don't know what kind of people, how you want to characterize them, but one of these people who think this movie is a, a gift to the discourse around marginalized identities to go, the only reason that you would uh, dislike it is because you fundamentally must hate women or Asians or blacks or anything else. Mm. Um, it, it, it's an easy way to dismiss criticism. I mean, we've and, seen it. We've uh, seen it before. You know, it was the exact same, uh, you know, way to deflect criticism for that absolutely God awful Ghostbusters remake. Right. You and know, to be fair, I, there are people who I am sure take it too far. Of course. And, I'm sure know, there are people making... that just hate it on the basis that, yeah, it's a remake for women, and I'm sure that is true. But right. But it also... Those, you know, those, those dissenting, those rare voices are always spotlighted as, as some sort of large yeah. majority when they say, 
I remember uh, when John Boyega was shown as a stormtrooper, as people were going, well, well, a uh, stormtrooper can't be black because they're supposed to be uh, clone troopers, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, there's probably 15 or 20 guys who were saying a very stupid thing about, about stormtroopers can't be black. But the majority of us understand, yes, yes. anybody can put on stormtrooper armor. It is not like if you have too much melanin in your skin, the helmet flies off. <laughs> like, we, we know that you can be a black stormtrooper. Please ignore the idiots. Uh, and any, this happens all the time. I mean, when they say Doctor Who, everybody hates uh, the doctor. Yeah, because they made female. Yeah. And anytime they, they always put those tweets embedded in the article and you check, the guy tweeting it has 15 followers. Yeah. You know, his name yeah, is Big Bobby. Uh, the headlines always like, what is it like? Outcry, outrage. You know, there's that one guy I, you know anger that because of, and it's like three tweets, with less there's, than 100 followers combined. There was this one journalist, uh, Tristan Cooper. Mm. writing for dorkly and that was like his bread and butter was every article had basically the same headline piss babies are mad at star wars the last <laughs> jedi piss babies are mad at doctor who and eventually we were like what is a piss baby what do you just stop just write i've asked that question many times i do another podcast where my co-host actually asked like what the fuck is a piss baby and i don't know you know but there are certain words that i use as identifiers to know that i can just eschew your opinion because it's completely yes. worthless and you will never have a thought worth listening to for the entirety of your existence piss baby is one of them man child is another uh, yeah i mean and then we started getting into it's also funny when you see like the evolution is that they had they had MRA. They went, oh, you're all MRAs. Uh, and yeah, the word yeah, incel right. comes along, and they go, okay, let's switch over to incel. Now they're all incels. Now and incels like, are I, terrorists I, as well. So Yeah, well, that's They're, ramp they're ramping it up. Are, yeah, well, I mean, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. It's just funny when I'm like, I know, you're out of, you're done using that one word, so you've switched over to this word temporarily, and then you'll find another one. Just, uh, let's, can we talk, about, which is a reason I don't use terms like uh, SJW. I don't because I think it's reductive. Uh, yeah, I, I used I like, used to. I'll be honest. I think around uh, you know yeah maybe when it was first came around. Yeah, it yeah. felt like a good descriptor, but then it was so overused and overapplied. It really felt that first of all, it didn't serve its purpose as a specific label because it had been right. overused. But then it became so broad that it yeah. referred to almost anything. And, and also, it did lend itself to parody as well because there were so many idiots throwing the words around loosely that it was like it's better to not use it anymore just so you don't get filed with yeah. those guys over there yeah. well, and i just also i like to avoid trying to categorize people into groups as much as possible I yeah mean, that's fair yeah. If everybody is an individual to say that you belong to a certain cast of you are the social justice warrior it's very hard to define what that means and i, and I think that those kind of terms end up distracting from the discussion because people will just immediately dismiss you as oh well if you're complaining about sjw's you must do this 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 and this and mm -hmm. Uh, it ends up be just muddling the discourse in a way that uh, I try to avoid it. Mm. I think the thing that really sort of made me laugh about The Last Jedi is how there was that period of time where it felt like every week or two, the hashtag, thank you, Ryan, or thank you, Ryan They're Johnson. They're still doing it. I know. Did like, that happen like two weeks ago? I was like, probably, like that movie's two years old. Why are you still doing this? Why are you thanking yeah. him in the first place? Like, Thank you, Ryan. What I did know. he do? What did he do that made your life so much better? Yeah, like even if you crazy. like the Last Jedi, like it's so confusing. But but I've also seen as well. I've seen like cultural commentators say that this is the line in the sand. That if you don't like this movie, you can be dismissed as some sort of bigot. And I'm oh, I'm, yeah. I'm I'm just blown away by that. It's very bizarre. Um, it. <sighs> I'm not going to claim that everybody who, you know, uh, comes into the discourse is 100%, you know, a great person. Mm. There's definitely comments on some of my videos where I'm like, okay, well, that wasn't really the point I was going for. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, feminism is cancer, dude. I'm like, yeah, feminism has some yeah, points. Yeah, I wasn't really going for that. <laughs> right, 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 right. That wasn't the exact point I was making. Um, but, you know, there's always going to be the rabble again, you know, mm. the, this dissenting number of voices who I don't think represent the whole. I think the majority of people are able to have a calm, civilized discussion about things. And yes, always everybody takes it too far, and I'm sure I take it too far uh, at some point. But but to say that everybody who hates the, <laughs> everybody who hates the Star Wars movie—that's what's always so absurd about it. It's not uh, like yeah. we're talking about some great cultural touchstone. You know, <laughs> we're not talking about 
I, I don't know, some enlightening film that raises the, the awareness of the entire race. We're talking about the Space Wizard movie. I cannot like the movie <laughs> about hitting each other with laser swords and it has no bearing on any social or political anything. It's insane. Yeah, it's and, and absolute in a way, it's sad that certain people would say that this billion dollar franchise owned by a mega conglomerate is, is a meaningful cultural touchstone that needs to be celebrated it's disney for the love of god like if you don't like a disney movie it's it's neither good or bad on the moral scale uh and disney is it's almost bad to like a disney movie they're evil in a way <laughs> Yo, they're uh, yeah. taking over every facet of entertainment and it is disturbing at how quickly they are doing it did you so, uh, uh did you see what they did to the uh journalist that uh, ruined black panther's perfect 100 score Oh yeah, I remember did they go that. after him like crazy. Yeah, of course they did. They were like demanding answers and like how dare he? And he was like some white was, Irish dude or something. Yeah, that was it was like an Irish public. Yeah, it too. was just well, I think it was like the Irish Independent, which obviously runs separately to the the main independent, if I remember rightly. But I, 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 mean, just, I, I was just I blown away by the, that. Yeah, I hate to be the classic white guy, but uh, Black Panther was boring to me. I was like, eh. Well, listen, I like, didn't, I, I, I didn't dislike it. I wouldn't, I, you know, I, I wouldn't say I yeah. disliked it strongly. I just thought it was a very typical superhero movie. It didn't, it didn't reach the high right. points of other superhero movies from the Marvel, you know, universe or whatever the fuck they're calling it these days. But um, it equally, it just didn't. It wasn't bad. It wasn't as terrible as some of the of the ones that they have put out there. It was just, yeah, it was. I good. mean, to me, it was. It was. Okay. Uh, it was it was another Ant Man. It's like, yeah, I could watch it. I don't really feel like it right now. Well, so I watched it in uh, a I watched it in a cinema in Vegas, and um, uh, you know, I, I I at the end. So the the movie ends and the credits roll. This is absolutely yeah. true, by the way. And I'm there with my with a friend of mine, and we obviously both white guys. And I'm about to like turn to him and go, oh, that was really overrated, actually. And as I'm as I'm about <laughs> to start talking people stood up and did the Wakanda salute. There was some black guys next to me and they stood up and did the Wakanda salute. And people were they like, the... you stand innovation, <laughs> rapturous applause, like the cinema. You know, I've never seen, I'm, I'm British for fuck's sake. We don't do that. Right. <laughs> Weddings, we don't celebrate like that. So I, I was like, yeah, let's not actually say anything. Let's have this conversation somewhere let's, else. Yeah, so I don't want to ruin here. anyone's like moment here. But it was, it was, listen, I understand why it was like perceived to be important. Um, you know, as, as and a, I also can understand that movie having a, meaning a lot to you as a black film goer. Who, yeah, that's what even, I mean. Absolutely. Even, yeah. yeah, even as a mediocre, you know, uh, or what I would consider a mediocre superhero movie, uh, to have you, a mediocre superhero movie that at least you know highlights uh, people who you know resemble you and who you yeah exactly yeah with. absolutely yeah it's absolutely. it's a it's a path forward to more of that so I respect it for that of course it's just a, yeah and I, and, I, and I think that was why I wasn't really cognizant how important it was right because obviously I'm not thinking in yeah, right. in, in those terms because you know I'm uh, it's I, I I'm not wired to be thinking about it in those terms right because uh, yeah. it's not it's not it doesn't have the same significance to me. Um, now, so to be yeah. fair, I want to see I want to see that same reaction to Blade because uh, I think <laughs> well, Blade that, is far oh, superior. I, yeah, I said this though <laughs> when they were labeling it, saying it was like the first superhero movie and uh, like you know and with with a black protagonist. I was right. like, man, come on! I was like, yo, that bring back true. Blade because that movie yeah. fucking rules, dude. You got Blade, you got fucking Spawn, like they, they were they were out there, right? Right. You know, they, they, it's yeah. just that. That first wave of superhero movies, unfortunately, most of them suck. Yeah, I still think Blade holds up. I love that movie. Yeah, I like the bit where the uh, fly crawls across the giant model of the city by accident and they left it in. That's always a, you know, someone <laughs> I just love that. I love that it. opening scene in the vampire. Yeah, I mean, that's club. a classic. Like, Oh, go God. And that dude's like, wow, this club is wild. And the blood starts starting <laughs> yeah. out. He's like, what the hell's going on? Oh, I love it. It's, it's so great. Good. Um, but yeah, so, so, I mean, listen, it, it, it was weird that it just, I mean, it was strange to me, but I, I think increasingly we, we do see it, right? There's this tendency where, uh, if something is considered to be progressive and, and it's got like people attached to it who are very vocal about that being their kind of ideology. Um, yeah. and, and then if they turn out a substandard product, the people that criticize it and are doing it in good faith, 
Um, do you seem to get lumped in with the people that would have criticized it no matter what because they're acting in bad faith? And it really becomes this like, you know, we're talking about, like you say, essentially movies aimed at children. We're talking about, you know, in a lot of cases, we're talking yeah. about, you know, just throw away garbage. These are not artistic you know, these, these are not works of art designed to stand the test of time. And yet they have become these, like, unbelievable battlefields almost every time one's released. Right. And, and I wonder how much of that is uh, conscious by the studios putting it out to sell up that angle. Mm. So that It definitely was for Ghostbusters. I right. For much. Ghostbusters, it was like, listen, if you don't see this movie, you're not a real feminist. Yeah. It was almost the message that was being sent out. Now... You know how aware of that are they? I think they're definitely a little bit aware of it, and it's definitely I think something they've relied on after the fact. Because what's his name? Uh, Paul Feig. Yeah, Paul. You Feig. know, you make a you make a bomb, you're in big trouble. So Paul Feig's on record being like, ah, oh, you know, it's just a bunch of Nazis and MRAs. You know, it was a great movie, but they're the ones who really I'm like Paul Feig. You made a bad movie, man. Like, you can't you can't pull this. Oh, it's the it's the racists and the sexists card every time. Yeah. I mean, I just think we as a society, I mean, entertainment, call me crazy. I mean, I haven't been around for the entire history of movies, but I don't remember casting being uh, taken so seriously where if, if a woman is given the leading role that it, it's a cause for celebration that must, you know, what, how about just women are going to be in some movies, uh, men are going to lead other movies. And instead of getting all our uh, attaching all this emotion to it, we're like, oh, God, I hope this movie succeeds because it'll be a triumph for women everywhere. How about we go, yeah, it's a piece of cinema made by, again, a billion dollar corporation who's trying to make recoup on their $500 million investment. Yeah. It has no bearing on, on the national conversation about anything, especially not. I mean, again, if it's a political movie made, you know, by, you know, some sort of director who's trying to make a real commentary, sure. I don't think Last Jedi is trying to have any real comment on the, the national discourse around race or sex or anything else. And I think it's silly to try and tie yourself up in that over again, the laser sword movie. Uh, just if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. And anybody who doesn't like it, it's not because they specifically want to destroy women or whatever else. But uh, I mean, what, what, absurd what, what, allegation. We're, ent we're entering into like very absurd times when it comes to like, you know, movies, I think, because there's this thing at the this th thing at the moment where now the prevailing wisdom seems to be like, I don't know if you saw the thing with Brian Cranston. He is playing somebody in a wheelchair. And uh, <laughs> the, the argument that was being made by, by some journalists and, you know, uh, cinematic commentators, let's say, was that because he wasn't in a wheelchair, he should make way for an actor who was in a wheelchair to play the part about the wheelchair bound uh, person. Right. A protagonist. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're reaching uh, levels of absurdity that are hard to come to terms with uh, the idea that uh, voice actors have to match the yeah. race of the That's characters. That's the other they big portray. one. Right. Yeah. right. Cause uh, the, the um, Alison Brady can't from BoJack play Horseman you right. know, came out and said she regretted it. Right. Which I, which I take, uh, if anyone's going to speak on that issue, I don't think it should be people who have a fine Hollywood career elsewhere. Mm. Uh, Alison Brie is in movies. Alison Brie has been in multiple popular television shows. And she can easily say, oh, yeah, it was very offensive that I d did that and I won't do any more voice acting. But I, I want to hear from someone who is a career voice actor who does not have other avenues of employment. And I want to know, do they, are they comfortable with the idea that they have to give up on X number of roles based on the color of their skin? Because uh, all the high-profile voice actors who have come out, they got money in the bank. It's been her. It's been uh, Hank Azaria, who does a poo mm -hmm. on Simpsons. Mm -hmm. And you go, yeah, because you guys are set. You don't, it, it doesn't affect you in any meaningful way. But there are a lot of uh, smaller voice actors who this is all they got. And you tell them, you know, oh, well, you can't play this character because they're uh, whatever else. You know, we have to find specifically someone of that heritage. It's very, I have a friend who's a voice actor, and she's like, she's like, I'm a, what is she? Not Arab, but a, what's the race that speaks Farsi? Oh, I, I, that, that's, <laughs> Persian. Uh, she's Persian. Yeah, Pers Persian, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. she goes, well, if we went by those rules, there's nobody for me to play. How many Persian characters are there? 
Right. And I'm like, ah, they'll probably still let you play white people. And she's like, all right, well, good. As long as it's fine going the other way, I'm set. But but this, this is the other thing as well. Like, I don't understand where that's come from. I've never I've never heard a black person ask for that. By 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 right. means of atonement, like it, it, and 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 it seemed to come out of this groundswell of you know justified outrage at uh, you know police brutality in America, and then they were like, yeah, and the voice actors, and I'm like, what the fuck? What what? This doesn't achieve yeah. any great noble goal. It's almost like a way to annoyingly insert yourself into a, a very valid conversation about something else and make it about your thing. And as you said, the people who are incredibly like wealthy and set for life get to score a few brownie points as they check out to right. count their money. You know? <laughs> That's what it yeah, felt anybody, like. Anybody, I mean, this this is always the great tragedy of any great social movement, or at least what I perceive as a great social movement. Because we had this with uh, Occupy Wall Street, which to me is right. a. Uh, I I care very deeply about income inequality. I think that the. Sure amount that certain people are making is unreasonable and I, I don't see any reason why people can't make a living wage regardless of what they're doing even if it maybe affects some billionaires in a way that they don't like but then very quickly that that movement which i think had goals that pretty much anyone could get behind i think most people would say yeah now yeah, we could give a little bit more to uh people at the bottom tier i mean if you look at the spectrum of wealth inequality they've done you know, studies where they're like, well, how do you think ideally wealth should be distributed? And the majority of people are like, oh, a very, you know, slight curve. And if you work real hard, you get up and you go, okay, well, here's how it's actually, you know, distributed. And it's like, ding, 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 ding. And you're like, oh, well, that seems okay. A little out of whack. Maybe we could revise that slightly. Uh, but again, that movement was hijacked by the same kind of, you know, I hate to use buzzwords, but identity politics was what we termed it at the time. Where, uh, I mean, you had people on the ground being like, okay, white man, uh, now is not your turn to speak. We have a stack. We have a progressive stack. First, are, are there any midgets here that would like to speak? You're first. Okay, no midgets today. Okay, well, uh, just regular disabled people, anything. Okay, we got one. You speak first, white man last. And you're like, we're not getting anything done, guys. It doesn't matter. This is all nonsense. And I hate to say it, the people who control all the power love it. They love when they can distract us from the actual conversation, get us to focus on minutia. Everybody in power right now is like, my God, what can we distract them with? How about voice actors? Just let's make the conversation about voice acting. And you're like, no, we want to address uh, this very obvious problem of police brutality. And they're like, we're going to get every corporation to tweet out oh a little God. square. Um and they're, you know, the brat stalls and the, when you try to play Minecraft, it's going to tell you to respect black lives. I'm like, okay, that's all well and good. I think it has no meaningful effect on what needs to actually happen. Like propose some laws, some legislation that pushes us forward. Don't start saying, and, and the worst part is I think a lot, it turns people against a very simple thing that most people would get behind. If you start yeah. adding problems at the top and problems at the top and people go well i can't support this because what, what, what i supported at the beginning now i have to support all this other stuff and, and it has outweighed the original message i mean even me as a black lives matter supporter it becomes harder every day when they go you know white people shouldn't be allowed to have this job we need less white people in this uh, industry and i go well as a white man it feels like i'm arguing against my best self-interest uh some of it sure yes i want more diversity in the workplace but I don't like the idea that they're like, let's just not hire any white people for the next five years. I'm like, that could, that could hurt me in a way that I think is unreasonable. Mm. Uh, but I yeah, mean, I, hate, I hate to extrapolate it out, but I've been telling people, I'm like, listen, if you're a white man who wants a job in the entertainment industry, uh, next five years, you, it's not going to happen. They're not going to be hiring more white guys. Uh, and you got to, luckily I've struck out and I'm independent and I'm on YouTube and, I'm able to make entertainment where I am, but I, you know, I look at it, I'm like, the odds of me getting hired to write on a network television show are uh, slim to none at this point. So whatever, go make your, go independent white man, as I've said, uh, that's just how it seems to be playing out. And you can't fight, you can't fight against that tide. Hmm. So uh, is it, well, I'll change tack, I'll, I'll, I'll move into another one of your videos that kind of blew up and went viral. And it's very often, presented as reality as opposed to satire um and that is of course that the uh the bell delphine 
uh, ga- gamer, gamer, yeah, gamer girl bathwater. Uh, for those that don't know, she is a uh, you know kind of very popular. Uh, I don't even know how to describe what she does. She just is like a model, I suppose, would be fair. A fair yeah, realization of what she's. She does. Uh, I mean, I w- I would. I want to say it's erotic what she does. It's a yeah. sort of erotic, but it's kind of strange. It's not like overtly erotic. No, uh, it's yeah. like a, it's a like she'll like play a, with like raw egg, which is just unsanitary. Yes. It's like erotic comedy. It, it's comedy, honestly. I yeah. see what she does as, as comedy, and a lot of people think she's a dumb, stupid ditz. And I go, I think she's an excellent comedian who's very self-aware. And everyone who thinks that she's you don't come up with these kind of ideas that go viral by being a moron. Like I think yeah. she knows what she's doing. Yeah. So uh, anyway, she put her own, she started selling her own bath water. Yes. Um, and I'm sure she's not the first person to do it, but she did brand it in a, you know, very sort of amusing way with the whole, um, you know, kind of gamer girl bath water angle. And you managed to, uh, well, uh, let, let me get this straight. Did you actually purchase the real thing? Or was no. it, you manufactured yeah. it as a fake, right? Well, that's the funny thing is that, yeah, I, I was like, oh, it'd be very easy because she posted a picture of it online. I'm like, well, just take that and put it in Photoshop and print out a label and slap it on a jar of water. And then you go online and you go, look, I got the bath water. Ha, 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 ha. I did not realize how stupid people would be to be like, I don't know how he got it an hour after she announced it. But, uh, you know, and it, it just got it got way more out of control than I ever expected it would. Uh, well, yeah, because you know you put the video out, which is lovingly titled uh, "What was it? Just I vaped Bell Bell Delphine's bath water." Bath water yeah, yeah. Um, and there's a picture of you blow it, exhaling the smoke in the thumbnail. Great job, <laughs> great job, excellent. It's a good looking uh, thumbnail, honestly. No, no, I, it's it's excellent. I really approve of that. And uh, I I I cannot tell you how many times I see like somebody tweet going, "Gamers are not okay." And it's that fucking picture of you <laughs> with that fucking title underneath it. Yeah. And, and everybody everybody takes it at face value. No yeah. one makes it to the end of the video where I go, this was fake. Here's because I and I wouldn't have even put that in the video if it wasn't for all the people tweeting like, you simp, you moron. Because even when I was like, well, it's a joke. And they're like, yeah, but you still gave her $30. And I'm like, no, I didn't, though. I bought a $2 jar of artichokes and slapped a sticker on it. Like, <sighs> That was a very just interesting lesson in how easy it is to trick everyone with with no amount of effort whatsoever. Well, because so, yeah, this was an argument just, that was made about satire right. uh, recently. I'm trying to think. It might have been in these fucking uh, hearings in Congress. What, what what they were saying was that uh, uh, sites like sites like the Babylon Bee are so believable because mainstream media has become so absurd that uh, what, what needs to happen is actually Facebook needs to regulate them because people can't tell the difference between satire and reality anymore, as if that should in any way be used to penalize the person that publishes the content, that the audience is stupid. Right. Um, it is, it is. I mean, we always had that problem with people mistaking Onion articles for real. Yep, yep. Um, it, is tra- it is tragic just... I don't, I don't know if people have gotten dumber or if it's just we've never had this much information to sell people all at once. Mm. Or just the style of information, the way you can write an article. And it does resemble some of the insane articles put out by actual journalistic outlets, which have kind of destroyed their credibility by having these clickbait headlines that barely resemble the actual story contained within. Uh, we have gone down a very strange rabbit hole. To the point where I, I guess I can't even blame people for being unable to recognize parody sometimes because we're living in a parody of a of an actual society. Like everybody's lost their god dang mind. Uh, so yeah, when it comes out and I post a picture on Twitter where I go, I got the bath water and I'm gonna vape it, and I, being a reasonable human being, go, well, anybody can recognize that I'm a YouTube comedian. Uh, there's not really any way to vape bath water that I'm aware of or that I've been told. And uh, how did he obtain it? you know 20 minutes after she announced it did he go to her house and pick it up in england uh but instead it's i think i think people don't want i think people may even in the back of their head know it's not real but just want to believe it yeah and that seems to be a common thread these days even if a story is unbelievable and complete nonsense if it if it's if it reinforces your worldview your worldview being uh, gamers or idiots or 
Republicans are always right. Whatever your worldview is, you're just going to go along with it. And uh, that is kind of what happened because this was before I ever put the video up. You know, I had bought the bath or I'd put the bathwater together because somebody had a funny idea. They're like, what if somebody vaped it? And I'm like, oh, that would be a funny, stupid video. Let me do that. I'll make a fake jar of bathwater. And I just posted a random picture on Twitter, you know, for my followers to be like, hey, look, I got the bathwater. I'm going to vape it. Ha ha ha. And then people took that and people who don't know me, I was at the top of like every Reddit, that stupid picture. It was a terrible yeah, picture. Yeah, I had like yeah. dandruff all over my shoulder because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't think anybody was ever going to, like nobody was going to care. The next thing I know, thousands upon thousands of people are sharing this stupid picture. I'm like, oh no. Oh, I've goofed. Oh, I was like, I couldn't tell if it was good or bad. You, I mean, you, you, tap, you tapped into the zeitgeist accidentally. And yeah. Not, and I mean, not to in be a good fair. One. To be fair, I look like I look like what somebody has in their head when you hear that somebody's going to vape a girl's used bathwater. Sure. You see a big beardy moron with a bunch of Evangelion toys on his shelf. Yeah, I can't. Uh, I can't probably... actually disagree with you. I'll be fair. I'll be honest. <laughs> it's true. I, which is which is funny because I embrace that character because I think that character is funny, and I do make videos where you know occasionally I. Because in that video where I vape bathwater, you know, I'm mm. I'm playing an idealized version, uh, incel version of myself, where mm. I'm talking about how Belle Delphine is the, the great goddess, and to ha consume her bathwater is a gift to all men, you know, a potion handed down by the fairy queen herself. Like I get the character, and I get what people want from it, but it's hard to it's hard to tell people or convince people. Yes, it's a character. Like like I'm doing a bit. And, and the most annoying, the most annoying complaint I get is people, they, they post that meme where they go, uh, you know, it's a guy and he goes, you know, he says something stupid and everyone's like, get out of here, you idiot. And then he goes, oh no, I was joking. And they're like, I was yeah. just pretending to be an idiot. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not it. Like, I see it as like a sketch. It's like a comedy sketch. It's like you watch SNL, you don't see Will Ferrell dressed up like an idiot cheerleader and then later go, oh, he was just pretending to be an idiot. So yeah, because it's a character. That's what comedy is, for the love of God. <laughs> well, uh, I, I mean, we, we are uh, in sort of approaching where people are a lot more explicit now in, in kind of like, this, you know, this isn't real, this is real. People kind of, kind of feel the need to really punctuate it. But I, I think because there are so many misunderstandings and like not all of them are benign. You know, some yeah. are like worrying that like people don't do their homework. I mean, uh, you know, and, and, and kind of get wrapped up in stuff. Like, I think the most mad thing is if when you hear about people sending hate mail to actors and actresses. Oh, yeah. You know, because of the characters they play doing bad things. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, how? <laughs> right. How? I'm, yeah, that's, again, are people losing their minds where you think, I'm like, listen, I hate to say it. Uh, as much as I dislike Rose's character in The Last Jedi, Kelly Merchan did not run, write that script. No. She is and, not and the casting director. Who's going to turn down starring herself. in a fucking Star Wars movie either, by the way? <laughs> not I. Said, yeah. Not I. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she did nothing wrong. Like, you can never fault the actor because the actor was... Ca the only person you can ever fault in that situation is whoever's putting the, money, the movie together, the producer, the director... Okay, the people in charge. The actor does what they are told. It was the same thing for uh, Jake Lloyd in The Phantom Menace. Everyone goes, mm -hmm. oh, he sucks as Anakin. Fuck that guy. And I'm like, fuck yeah, that guy. Fuck George Lucas. Yeah, he how did no one know this? How did no one know this? Yeah. Like, he at any no point could have shut down production and been like, listen, kid, you suck. We're getting somebody else. You know, uh, keep, keep in mind, back in the day, like, you know, fucking Al Pacino nearly wasn't in The Godfather. Right. It, it, you know, they filmed the first few days and they were like, this guy, I don't know. You know? But like, what? Fucking Anakin's the guy that, like, yeah, no, trust me, he's going to come good. Like, I, I, I got it. Yeah, it was awful. I mean, they filmed, they filmed like seven days of, uh, or maybe three. I don't know how many days they filmed of Back to the Future with, uh, was it Eric Rogers? Eric, Eric Stoltz. Marty McFly? Eric, Eric Stoltz. Stoltz. Yeah. Yeah. Stoltz. And they got like three days into filming and they went, oh, you're just terrible. We, we got to get Marty. We got to get uh, Michael J. Fox. Mm. Uh, and luckily they did get Michael J. Fox and you kind of feel bad for Eric Stoltz. You're like, yeah, ah, poor guy. You could have been part of the greatest friend. You were so close to being part of the great, one of the greatest movie franchises. You were on set as the character and you goofed, you goofed yeah. it. I, you know, that's one of those things. I'm not, I'm definitely not sad about that. So yeah, I mean, well, I mean, 
He was not. He was a bit wooden. He was. A, he didn't have yeah. the charisma that you need. Yeah, because it's. It, I, I'm pretty sure I've seen the scenes. They're on the. They're on the extras, like on the special. Yeah. yeah, they're just boring. It's just boring to watch him. Mm. But yeah, we are living in a time where uh, reality has become a. Uh, reality is not agreed upon. Uh, reality shifts and changes. Uh, not to get too political, but I mean, we have a president in this country who. Uh, very clearly wants people to believe that certain news outlets or news places are skewing the truth. And to be fair, I'm sure some of them are, uh, but some of them are not. I don't, I don't think, uh, I know CNN is his big target and maybe somebody can point it out to me, but I've never seen CNN as the most distrustful news network. Are they slanted and biased? Sure. But I don't believe they're wholesale making up stories um they they did have, have a, to they did have to fire three journalists for wholesale making up stories last year i think it was oh been. did they yeah well then uh, maybe See, that's my know. area my, what my podcast is usually about is breaking down media spin I, i'd agree I'd, I'd, I'd say obviously cnn aren't the worst defenders but they're 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 right. they're, 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 they're a far cry from uh what they used to be i mean to be fair i would say probably the news outlets that trump loves something like a fox news uh, has fox news never been caught kind of oh all the story? time all yeah, the they're the, the ultimate spin zone. I'm trying to think what was uh, that? What was that hilarious uh, headline? It was like uh, it was someone along the lines of like Trump speaks out against Mexican countries, <laughs> right? So just kind of yeah, yeah. yeah, let that one percolate. For those a while. Mexican countries, yeah, all those, those Mex Mexican, yeah, countries. all of them, yeah. <laughs> um, so so listen, I I, I think for, yeah, obviously, I mean, but the, but the here's what's what worries me. Um, and I definitely won't get into you, uh, this with you because it'll then this will be the rest of the uh, spiral. Podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but you know, Fox News was right, rightfully derided as being this like blend of like opinion journalism, uh, reportage with a heavy, heavy stint. And of course, you know, its roots when it was founded by Roger Ailes was that it was meant yes. to be the essentially the propaganda arm of the republican party it was deliberately designed with that in mind so obviously you couldn't trust it but what and everyone used to laugh at it because of its obvious bias and its journalistic failings and its lack of ethics and all of that stuff it was treated as a, as a joke yeah uh, but then that joke became the most popular news network channel it started making money it was one of the few few uh, network uh, news stations that actually pr was making a profit and was getting huge, huge ratings and killing everyone in the ratings. And all the other news networks were like, wait, if that model works, we could lean into that model just a uh, little bit. Yeah. And we'd be doing it on the right side because we're, we're liberal. So, so what's the harm? And then you end up with what we've got in America now, which is like, I don't think there's a single mainstream news outlet that, that uh, has gone an entire year without publishing a horrendous right. piece of like misinformation. Typically, no, about, to, to be yeah. fair, I mean, any article I read at this point, uh, you got to. The thing is, usually these articles I say will reveal their hidden truths onto you. As if you read the article, which most people do not do, mm. you can discover for yourself the, the actual facts that are being presented. But I think a lot of people lack the ability. And I'm not even saying this is a bad thing. I mean, it's hard to have the ability to see the see the spin within an article and and narrow down to the actual facts mm. uh it, it takes a lot of work to be able to do that sometimes it takes a lot of awareness of how people propagate that spin um so yes it is hard to find an unbiased source uh and it, it is troubles i don't know how to tell people how to define their reality how do you define your reality at this point even now when we have video footage video footage can be deceptively edited or yeah. leave out the first 20 seconds yeah uh, and, and they do you know in the main and they do yeah, and i've fallen for either. it more than a few times and yeah, i've been yeah, very sure. upset with myself because of it yeah uh, it, which is it, it's even happened to me dude like and I, I you know that's my bread and butter you know I, that's what i studied that's that's what my job has been for you know over a decade i'm a journalist so yeah right. it, it you know, when 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 I get the wool pulled over my eyes, all right, I, I'm I'm quick to leap into a story and say this is a disgrace before I get the full facts. Yeah, I almost think it's a byproduct of of just social media. Like we are locked into like a, a take factory, and the quicker yeah. you know, right? So how it works is something happens. Oh, the qu first person out the door is uh, yeah. The most, Some, yes. something happens, and then obviously, like okay, it's going to generate traffic because it's a happening. Everybody wants 
attention and traffic and followers and you know and click on this and promote this so you have to have a take about it you have to have an opinion so it's the take factory fires up and everyone wants to spit their take out as fast as possible as loud as possible and and probably as inflammatory uh, uh as possible or or if you're not that kind of person you underscore like the you know the, the central message and it's a really loud virtue signal and then you sit back and you watch and people will people will reply in agreement or disagree and either way you're gaining followers you're watching your tweet it might go viral it gets, right. you're watching those little numbers go up and, and me it, and you are me and you are in an interesting position because we do have followers so the endorphin rush of being a part of the conversation is even more i don't know how addicting it is for you but for me uh i have to stop myself and i'll tweet things out and then 10 seconds later, I look at it and I go, my God, you fool, stop chasing the rush. This is an ill thought out uh, point or you have not researched the story. I end up deleting so many of my tweets about 15 seconds after I put them out because there's Too that rush then. to be the first. Too yeah, well, then. I think a lot of my followers are always like, hey, what happened to that tweet? And I'm like, I ah, don't worry about it. Don't think about it. I don't want to address my failings as a human being right now. Yeah, I think I think that is that is definitely part of it. You know, I talk about this a lot as well. Like, I believe social media is a big driver of like mental illness, right? That's what I honestly believe. And I think um, people with like addictive personalities uh, should definitely stay away from it. I, I, I think it's very there is that endorphin rush. I mean, people would be lying if they say it, but like, yeah, I've seen people get very despondent. This was actually going to be a good segue into what I wanted to talk about uh, next with you. But I've seen people get very despondent when they have one tweet and it quote this is what the kids say bangs they have a tweet that bangs <laughs> and they yeah. get you know 30,000 likes and you know 10,000 retweets and it's the most popular tweet and they gain 200 followers because of it and then they put out another meme the next day thinking well you know i've cracked it now i've cracked the code cracked and, the code yeah and they get five <laughs> retweets and no one gives a fuck and then they become sad they become sad that they never get to replicate the success of that one tweet and they don't realize Jason, it's not, that heroin that first yeah heroin it's not high. about them it's not like their ideas are invalid and they're not smart or they don't have anything to say i mean that might be true and you it's yeah. not like every tweet that goes viral is like some incredibly insightful hilarious you know it, it's a lot of them are just shite right but, but right right but the, you know they they, they people really see it as a reflection of them or their audience and they get super depressed that they're not good, that they're not as popular as that one viral incident would kind of lead them to make you know delude themselves into thinking that yeah and just real quick on the thing about the press i mean the one thing i would mm. want to say to people is skepticism is very healthy uh, outright denial is not because I get into too many people who, you know, I get into a thing where they go, do you have a source? And I go, here's CNN. And they'll go, well, I can't trust CNN as a source. I go, okay, well, here's MSNBC. And they go, oh, no, they're, they're slanted as well. I'm like, uh, here's, here's Fox News. They go, yeah, 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 but I don't trust any of this mainstream media. I'm like, can you give me a list of which sources you do trust? And when you narrow it down, they go, well, I just don't trust any media at all. And I go, well, your skepticism is reasonable. You should always have skepticism going into a story, especially of how many stories are being proven wrong but if you've gotten to the point where you trust no media whatsoever even even slightly you know uh, i think you've gone off the deep end there is still value in journalism there are still journalists who are not out there to hoodwink you uh and find find some places you believe and uh, trust trust sources you can always go in a news article and even if you don't like the news outlet check the sources that they link and a lot of the times those sources they'll be citing the you know like the 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 Food and Drug Administration. Are you gonna tell me they're on the on the liberal dole or whatever the hell else you want to say? Like some sources are valid. Use those. Yeah. Uh, skepticism, not outright denial, is is the way to live your life. I would say. So um on 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 the note of uh, you know chasing the high, uh, yeah. you know I I gotta ask you uh you, you know you yes you've I can get you heroin. Eggs, I'm, I could I no, need I to lose some weight. It's perfect. It's, <laughs> The dream. The pounds come right off. Look yeah. at me. They're just uh, disappearing. <laughs> yeah, this, oh, that's no, what I mean. I, I know straight the away heroin. heroin yeah, user, yeah, 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 not your drug of choice. I'm going to be mm -mm. real about it. Uh, but um, no, My the drug of choice is uh, Hostess Cupcakes. Yeah, you know what, dude? Though, I mean, them. listen, I, 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 okay, fuck it. Now we're talking about weight, but 
you know, I, I obviously lived in, I was talking about this earlier at the day on my stream. I went out to the UK, uh, I lived in the UK for ages, went out to the US and yeah. uh, immediately I moved to the South. I was living in Georgia and, uh, you know, fried chicken's a fucking breakfast food. And, yeah. you know, it's fried chicken, waffles and syrup. And, <laughs> and you get off of that and you go, well, of course I want that uh, for breakfast. Uh, this is insane. This is brilliant. So you, you eat that. And that's like 2,000 calories immediately. And that's your first oh, yeah. meal of the day, you know. And then, you know, and then you have something else. Oh, you got this great barbecue. You want some ribs? You want some collard greens? And you're like, well, greens are good for you. Oh, no, no. It's like we soak them in bacon and all We soak them in uh, pork fat to yeah. make them taste good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're like, holy To be fair, shit. the South is much fatter than the rest of the... But it hit me like a ton of bricks, dude. <laughs> I gained like fucking 40 pounds in like yeah. a year. It was insane. Um, it is, it is, it is hard to find healthy meals just in, if you don't like to cook in America, you're, you're kind of out of luck in terms of staying low on calories, you either cook your own meals or try to find some sort of alternatives, but most places are just out to uh, poison your body. And it, it is very shameful. And every time I meet someone from abroad, I go, yes, I am a typical American. Well, maybe, maybe a bit bigger than typical, but. Oh, we love to eat, and we can't stop ourselves because we have no self-control, and we are a me country, and everything is about yeah. our own instant gratification. Oh, sure, and, I think and, is what we're on. But but I but on. I also think, man, there's got to be something, and there's there's got to be something uh, in the food that fucks everyone up in America. I, I, I like. I think part of it is that we have too much sugar. Yeah. Just as a baseline of yeah. our food, which actually encourages our hunger. Like our bread has more sugar in it than like other countries. And like mm. you're just drinking soft drinks from a young from a young age, you'll give a kid a, a soda with his happy meal or whatever else. Yeah. And uh and, it, and it's disgusting. Like the American diet, you know, like I always tell people, I'm like, why do you put ketchup on everything? Like, oh, I just like ketchup. I'm like, it's just syrup. It's just tomato syrup. Yeah. Don't you're sugar. talking about chicken and waffles, like Sugar is what gets you, and I think that's the problem with America is that we have had – it's just this sugar pollutes everything we have. It's very hard to get away from sugar. I was so happy when I went to Japan, and they have those vending machines, and every drink is – The ones with the used panties in? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get, a, you get your panties, first of all, and as you're sniffing those, you get this perfectly sweetened drink. It's just light on the tongue. You sniff the panties a little bit. You take a swig. You're having yourself a good time. I'm just – other countries have figured out sugar. Yeah. You know you can get those panties in Japan, by the way. No, no, no. I, 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 I do know. It's fucking insane. I don't I, know if they're still in the vending machine. The they vending, used to, to be. To be fair. I, right. The first time I saw that, I was like, what the fuck is going on over there? <laughs> like, I'm, well, we have to stress, this is, you know, specific vending machines outside of porn sh stores. They're not, like, in major metropolitan. Yeah, they're not, like, in the train station or whatever. No, 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 no. no. A lot of people are, like... <laughs> Yeah. think that but you still, gotta go down to the red, like it's, red uh, yeah but i mean even that like i've been to so many red light districts all over the world that's still insane uh, yeah. like yeah i mean there's a great documentary where they went into one of those stores and they're like yeah you know high school girls to make a little extra money they come in and we buy their panties Jesus and you take a you take Christ. a you know a polaroid photograph of them and you put it in the bag with the panties <sighs> and perverts come in and they choose which high school girls panties they want like, hey, what? capitalism. How can you argue with capitalism? What the ah. fuck is going on, dude? If those girls are making money, what, well, how can you disagree with a little entrepreneurship, right? <sighs> fuck. But Land um of opportunity, Japan. Uh, yeah. But but look, so uh uh you know, I don't know if you've uh, like does the does the white thing like bother you at all because you're in the public eye, you know? You've mentioned it a few times, like you're about talking does about what bother me? The 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 weight thing. You know, you said you're a bigger a bigger gentleman. And you've said a couple yeah. of times in answers, you know, you've said that like, oh, I look like the stereotypical gay me and I'm a big guy with a beard or whatever. So I mean, do, does it bother you? Because obviously when you do what we do and you make content, you know, and you're you're recording yourself all the time, putting yourself in a video. I mean, I'm you know, people can be very critical about things that aren't even necessarily related to the content. Yes. Um, that's the thing is that, uh, am I bothered by being overweight? Because I want to be healthy. Sure. You mm -hmm. know, and I am, I am working out and trying to get back to fighting weight. At one point I was a reasonably sized gentleman and then went through a bad breakup and said, let's just eat pizza for three years. Uh, but I, I think I'm leaving that sector, but it mm -hmm. is more the perception of the fat man that is, you know, very hard to overcome. Uh, people associate 
weight with intelligence they assume no, you know a truly intelligent person well yeah there's a, there must be a payoff it. right that's what people think well <laughs> it helps for uh comedy in a way uh, people yeah. assume you're a dullard and you get to have fun with that character i mean as i always tell people they're like Vito, you know why don't you why don't you lose some weight i'm like well i'd like to lose some weight but let's be clear uh a fat man is a funny man people love a funny fat man and always have and always will there's something about it that's you're approachable I, uh, one of the great things of comedy is, is you want to look at a comedian and you want to think he's in a worse position than you are you want to go watch a movie where a guy's having the worst day of his life and you're like ah at least i'm not that motherfucker look, <laughs> look at him and his Pratt falls he's having the worst day of his life my day is going great uh and you know being a funny fat man and falling down getting set on fire or whatever the hell else it is people take great joy in your suffering and it's fun mm -hmm. to play into that and i love playing that character and i have no problem with that character and i tell people that i say look you know i'm i'm doing the joe or not joe rogan uh seth rogan uh what's the guy from uh super bad whose name i always forget oh yeah i know jonah hill jonah, yeah, jonah hill, hill yeah seth rogan the way it works in hollywood or at least as i've observed is you start off as the funny fat man you gain everyone's love and once the love has been garnered then you can slim down. You and, lose all uh, the weight. And, your... and, and then you, you become a, a pretentious asshole. Exactly. And, and you're you not funny everyone. anymore. And you lecture everyone. You do terrible commercials that yeah. peddle <laughs> statistical lies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems to be the path, dude. It is. Uh, I mean, there, yeah, being a fat man, it is its own burden. And, you know, you can't. You know, it's not it's not a great burden. I'm not saying it, it makes my life. And I obviously have had success regardless of it. But you do have to deal with certain perceptions. Again, the biggest perception for me is the idea that I'm an unintelligent bore and a, you know, a objectifier of women and a creep. Being called a creep mm, or assumed creep, to be some yeah. sort of sexual creep. I mean, I had a thing like that recently where I, I made a video about a year ago. And uh, I, it was there were some women there who uh, I was basically placed on a team with it's a complicated situation but i was filming our group doing things and one of the girls recently said that veto creep you know made a video with me in it and he was filming my legs uh in a creepy way panning up and down my legs and if you right. watch the video it was it was a, a physical challenge we were trying to win points in an event and the challenge was to run really fast on a platform that you know just counted how many steps you went and i'm whipping the camera around i've got her i've got the audience laughing and i'm laughing at no point am i like look at these feet everybody look at that. it was the most innocent thing at no point did anything in my mind say yeah get those feet in there i, I don't care about your legs you crazy woman that's not my thing i'm into all sorts of crazy shit i don't need your legs uh but again these things come out and because you are a fat goofy weirdo with a beard everyone assumes that you're out to do something horrible to women and w what can you say to them no I i'm not that stereotype you have in your head is garbage i mean i can't i can't fight against the crying white woman as i always say the white women's tears are the most powerful thing on earth and there's no way to fight it if a white woman starts crying and says Vito is a creep you gotta go all right well can't win that battle just gonna head up and go home and say whatever you want about me. I've already lost. So that's the biggest thing is just these perceptions of things. And you can't prove to people I'm an intelligent, uh, articulate and uh, you know, reasonable guy. Some people are just always gonna go fat people are idiots and creeps and uh, that's just the way it is. And uh, you, you, what can you do? You can't fight uh, society. <laughs> we, we truly do live in a society. We so, live in a society. So look, I look, want more naked women's feet in that society. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> so chasing the high. Chasing the high. Chasing the high. Chasing the high. You have uh, a hugely popular video on YouTube. It's recommended to almost everyone to the point where, you know, if I was to pull the number of tweets of people complaining about having it recommended uh, to them, it would be vast and overwhelming. And you've got several other you know, videos that are, that are popular. Um, but I've also followed your tweets. 
is I follow you on Twitter and I've seen you sort of lament a, a, a little bit like, you know, when you put work in, when you put more work than you did for that super popular video into other videos and they don't blow up as much. Um, and some of the content you do, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't come close. I mean, well, not many videos on YouTube will come close to 9.2 million views. Yeah. Um, it, that, that must be in the top percentile, no doubt. But the, the, but, but, but it, do, do you ever get like disheartened? I know so many content creators that literally what they do is just distill down to numbers and that's all they think about. And it's, it, it, they, they obsess over it. Well, I mean, to survive, you almost have to care about the numbers. I mean, my goal, my ultimate goal would hopefully to get to the point where I could uh, fully finance my ability or my career as a creator and keep a roof over my head and not live in a shack and not, you know, be able to afford whatever else. And obviously numbers, I mean, maybe not everybody looks at it this way, but I see numbers as directly tying into my ability to support myself. Right. The more people who see my content, the more people I can convince, hey, if you thought that was funny, there's a way to see more of it. The more of you who sign up for the Patreon, the more of you who watch the ads, that honestly gives me the ability to make more content. I mean, a year or two ago, I had no money. So I was forced, people are like, how come you don't update your channel as much? I'm like, I gotta get paid, ladies and gentlemen. I gotta take on, you know, I do a lot of freelance editing work and uh, graphic design, and it left me with very little time to update my channel. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, the numbers, it's it's a sad game you have to play because I have a list of topics I'd love to make videos about, but when I really sit down and think about it, I go, the number of people who are going to want to watch me explain the entire plot of Neon Genesis Evangelion is not at all equivalent to the number of people who just want to watch me shit on Star Wars again. Yeah. And so it becomes this weird time value proposition. I mean, at least for me, these videos, some people, have, you know, their, their model is, well, I'll just make 10 videos a day. Uh, that's not me. I don't think I have enough things to talk about. Uh, so any video I make, I really have to kind of think about it and be like, okay, this topic's interesting to me. Is it interesting to anybody else? Mm. And sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. Now, and, and you do eventually, I mean, as a creator, you do eventually realize uh, there's no way to beat this robot, this god dang YouTube robot. It makes up its mind at random as to what content it wants to promote which content is good, which content is bad. I mean, your video can get buried just for having a bad thumbnail. I recently yeah. was like, what happens if I just swap my thumbnails out and instantly, you know, I even like changing the color. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. The color is huge. I'm always yeah. like, is red or yellow what people want to see? Mm. I can't tell. They like, I think there's actually some color theory out there that tells you, you know, yellow conveys these emotions to people and red conveys these emotions. I mean, that's a big part of if you study marketing, the color theory and whatever yeah. else. Um, so it's just this weird game that you, you really can't win. I mean, some people maybe have cracked a code and they've developed a, you know, a system where people just consistently watch whatever they put out. Uh, but a guy like me, it's kind of a crapshoot. I mean, my big problem is that my channel is not as focused as other people because I get bored mm. talking about the same thing over and over. So yeah. I have comedy skits, I have going to conventions, I have movie reviews, because uh, I'm an idiot. If I was a smart man who was trying to use YouTube to make money, you pick a niche and you go for it. You become a guy who talks about nothing but Star Wars for the rest of your life, mm. you collect the paycheck and you go home. But that wouldn't satisfy me as a creator or a comedian. I would, I would get bored of that and I would hate myself. But, but, I, but I've so, seen you, I saw you tweet that out recently. You said, I'm, I'm just looking at it now, you know, that uh, the, you, you, you know sort of from a financial perspective, you should do the nerd news because that is yes. what brings in the traffic. Like you say, everyone loves Duncan on Star Wars or, you know, whichever comic book they fucked up this week or, you know, whatever it yeah. is. <laughs> uh, and, and, and yet I'm, I'm with you. I find talking about those things like pretty tedious. I mean, I look at, and I'm always calling this guy out and hopefully he understands it's from a place of a, uh, 
the friendly rivalry. Oh, friendly. Uh, are you aware of the channel uh, Geeks and Gamers? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let me tell you. I find this stuff a little bit too overbearing, honestly. I think well, he, he always sets it up. You'll never guess what those darn SJWs are doing to me this <laughs> week. Like, like he's in a fucking one-man war against something that probably right. doesn't even exist. And, and to be fair, he's it's a character. And you have to understand it's a character. Because no man on the in, okay. in the history of the planet Earth has Is ever been though? this angry at this many things. Things. I hope to God it's a character. I'm How not... can anyone be this mad about this many topics? I, I, I get mad at like one or two things a week. I this know, man dude. gets mad at ten things a day. It's very convincing. I mean, he should have been in the fucking Emmys or something. I or mean, I, as I'll always say, whereas the content is not what I want to make, God bless you for finding uh, your niche, and God bless you for figuring out a way to do it. But if I type Brie Larson into his search bar, uh, <laughs> let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. He has I in this this sounds like a joke. This sounds like I'm making this up. <laughs> Type Brie Larson into a search bar. More than a hundred videos. No. About cat maybe more than two hundred videos. No, he doesn't. No one does. Rotten Tomatoes deletes my fan review. Marvel doesn't care about the fans. Uh let's see. No. Come on, no one. Not even Brie there's Larson. A, there's a hundred videos on his channel about Brie Larson. Not even Brie Larson. He blocked my or Brie Captain Larson. Marvel. Uh, just, just her in general. Every thumbnail is her being. You know, look at her. She's awful. And uh, I couldn't do it. I could do it, and I would hate at myself every moment of every day. Yeah. And that's the worst part: is sitting there and going, "My God, if I could just abandon." my whatever this is that prevents me from doing it and just every day i don't understand the audience for this at a certain point don't you already understand that you don't like brie larson do you need a hundredth reason to explain yeah but i bet if you look at the analytics for those videos right i bet they're all like this i bet it's like you know people see the title oh that crazy bitch brie larson's been at it again they click on it and then, he, and, and because it's all front loaded content, because no, you know, these types of people don't right. have attention spans what they're consuming. They s simply say, like, Brie Larson embarrassed herself again with this, like, super, you know, condescending, uh, you know, sh reading mean tweets yeah. video. Did you see this did, video where yeah, she was, you, you know, she sounded snooty? Or right. And they, and, and, and they go, Yeah, I did see that. She's a bitch. And then they just played that video. And then they add a bit more words for commentary and it's like five, six minutes. And I bet the average view time is like 40 seconds or something. Right. Because It's, it's just, very just possible get, that the metrics yeah. are terrible on these videos. Oh, no. I, well, I mean, I, they still make money. But right. I mean, you know, it's like, th those are what I call, that's the panda porn. Pan I'm not, not panda as in the bear, obviously. Right, that's pandering. Pa panda porn. Right. Else, but yeah, panda porn. It's, it's where... And it's, to be yeah. fair, I, I, I understand why you would make... If it's getting views, how can I even tell you you're wrong? I just don't understand uh, how the audience stays engaged with that kind of content. I, I, I don't watch videos about, I know I don't like Brie Larson. She said some stupid things in the past and I don't like it, but I moved on from there. There's nothing else I need to know about this woman. Um, and it is, it is, there are a lot of channels that are like that, that find this niche and find a piece of content or a topic mm. that uh, appeals to people or gets them views. And yeah, I guess they are kind of just chasing the views. They're saying, well, it was popular, so why would I stop? And I think there's actually videos of uh, different commentators saying, listen, I don't really care about Brie Larson, but you guys keep clicking on this stuff. And I'm like, see, yeah. I couldn't do that. I couldn't talk about topics I don't care about in any way. There's a I guy a care called, about a topic. Uh, it runs an account called Nerdrotic. And, yeah, I'm uh, aware of that guy. Yeah, right? Like That seems to be about as far into it as I could see myself going like the guy clearly cares i mean it's still the same bullshit with here's my you know fucking man cave with the uh, funko pops on the wall figures, yeah. yeah you know i always <laughs> made that joke because i've just moved house which is why my shit's empty i'm actually a little embarrassed to be interviewing you with nothing in the background but whatever oh, don't worry about it uh the... people always give me crap because i have uh they go why do you have funko pops real mm. quick it's ironic right yeah, well, I hate the only Funko Pops I have are a custom Funko Pop someone made of me. That's because that's they know sick. how much Fair I hate enough. Funko Pops. Yeah, that's pretty fucking cool. I can't. And also one we set on fire because I just like lighting things on fire. Yeah. Uh, I, I hate those things. But yeah. Please continue. No, no. So I was just saying, like, he's clearly into it because he's got the fucking man cave with all the crazy crap on the walls, and and yeah. it's not like he he does everything. It's it's comics. 
It's TV shows. It's movies. He is always uh, always new news. He does live streams. And it's like, okay, it, it's like a very toned down version of what we were just talking about. So I'm, I'm totally yeah. okay with it. I actually think his content's good. I think he makes, you know, salient points. Um, and he avoids a lot of the more ridiculous over rhetoric. And as I said, the geeks and gamers guy or whatever the fuck, he always, he always, every time I see a video of his, it's like, they've, they've tried to get me again and try to silence me again. <laughs> but you're not preaching any like great profound truth. You're not telling the world yeah. that Soylent Green is people. You're just saying Brie Larson is a twat. <laughs> and we all know Plus, it. the other thing is the level of vitriol, the level of being, uh, you know, enraged. I'm like, I, 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 I hate those Star Wars movies, but uh, as much as I, I might take on a, a tone of disbelief, I'm not enraged that Star Wars is bad. I think it is a tragedy of uh, storytelling and modern storytelling and teaching the next generation of storytellers how to tell a story. I think there's something there. But at no point am I sitting down and I'm going, Kathleen Kennedy has destroyed Star Wars. Yeah. I'm like, I don't care that much. Uh, yeah. Is it a tragedy for those of you who love Star Wars? Yes, but you still have what you loved and the creative decisions. There's always going to be something that goes Mega wrong. Mega Corporation releases bad product, more news at 11. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, well, what, are we, what are we jerking off about with that? It's, it's like such a minor thing. Like a bad movie, it should like really just wash over you. Like, well, get them next time, yeah. champ. You know, you go and see the next one. It's like it's fine to critique it. It's fun to critique it. But at the end Absolutely. of the day, I'm like I'm like you. It's like I think it's an objectively bad movie, but I only talk about it when I'm talking about it. I don't make a point to bring it up every fucking waking moment as yeah. if it's some part of some. And conspiracy. I think there are ways to critique something that has value to the discourse. Where I, I go at these movies very much from a storytelling perspective, where I go. Listen, I just love plots. I love reading scripts. I love reading books. I, I like good stories. And it drives me insane when I see Batman versus Superman. And I, it makes literally no Martha. sense to me. I'm like, what is this movie? <laughs> they go, well, here's the thing. Superman's been framed for burning down an African village. And I'm like, what the, what? Why? <laughs> <laughs> the first time uh, Batman and Superman are going to fight. And this is the plot of the movie? Yeah, this is how it oh opens up. Oh, my God. Superman is burnt down an African village, so we think. Like, why? What? I mean, did you pay any attention to the first? But it was thing? actually Lex Luthor. Well, why? Why did he do why that? Did, well, why, why did he do it? He wanted to put a bomb in a man's wheelchair. But that, what do you want? <laughs> what know, is happening? That movie. Yeah, that is movie. Fucking. That movie is gross. Let's be clear. That movie is the worst than the last year. Oh, by I, far, I dude. Like, yeah. yeah, not even. Uh, we don't talk about it as much as uh, as that last Jedi because whatever you can. What's well, actually really unpleasant, franchise. I guess. I, I think for something to be worthy of critique, it still sort of has to have some like good points in it, right? But yeah. if something is if something is just inherently dog shit across the board, <laughs> like there's right. no there's no point in critiquing it, you know, like you don't you just don't do it, like yeah. So yeah, it, that it film. is bizarre to me that that movie has so many defenders who are all excited for the Snyder cut of uh, Justice League as if it will somehow oh god be God's no. gift to creation. No. Oh god, I'm looking forward to see. I would just want to see it, and I if it's good, I will be blown away, and if it's bad, I can't wait to figure out why and talk about it because. What what an insane experiment that whole Zack Snyder trilogy was. Well, may, maybe that'll be the the next big video that'll that'll blow up and and get you that. Yeah. You know, maybe you'll be at ten million. You know. But what I wanted, what I was uh, about to talk about is that. Yeah. I I the the reason I can't talk about you know the reporting on the nerd news or the game news or whatever else. I mean, occasionally one of those topics will pique my interest. Mm. But honestly, I I don't spend a lot of time consuming media because. I, I've, I've, I've consumed so much media over the course of my life that I really just want to create my own things. And, and I get into this situation where I go, you know, people go, oh my God, you have a 9 million uh, view YouTube video. You must feel on the top of the world. And I go, is my crowning achievement going to be tearing apart the creative works of other people? Because mm. to me, that would be, I would, I would like for my crowning achievement to be to create something whole and new from within the sphere of my infinite mind and have that be celebrated as a great creative work. So that's, that's where I land is that I, I, don't, I don't. It's the critic's I find curse, value. Right? It is the critic's curse. Where I find, well, I find great value in, in looking through these movies and discovering their narrative failures. 
narrative failures that frankly baffled me that I'm like, I don't understand how you write Batman v Superman. I really don't. Uh, but at a certain point, I would like to get away from that. And I have certain machinations in play. And uh, I would love to make a movie. I would like to make a cartoon, whatever it comes down to. Just get, I love stories. I've always loved stories and storytelling. And that's hopefully the next step in my career. And that's why, again, why I get on YouTube and I go, yes, it would be easy money to every day be like, here's why this new comic book is SJW propaganda or whatever is the most popular <laughs> thing at the time. Uh, but it doesn't interest me. It makes me feel dirty, honestly, if that would be the only thing I can find to create for people. I, I would like to give people what I think, not to discredit those who talk about those things. I think there are, is a more meaningful things to do with my time and more meaningful content I can hopefully deliver to people. Maybe well, maybe I'm just speaking loftily about my own, you know, potential. No, I, 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 no listen, I, I, well, I mean, there's only one way to find out. I mean, like, you know, people who... <laughs> flop i mean like they, they, you know some some of the most like i was that guy that neil neil breen oh yeah hey you know more respect to that man and I, he he went out and made a bunch of movies you know so yeah make make See, but i well. i have such deep respect for that even yes. someone who goes out and makes complete trash yeah. if that trash was born of your mind i mean Zack Snyder doesn't count because, you know, he did it with a studio backing. But yeah, you exactly. by yourself yeah, totally. go out and have a singular vision. Uh, God bless you, even if that vision is a train wreck and a disaster. Yeah, uh, and, and, you know, and you never know what's going to attain cult status. I mean, you know, the, the, the history is replete with examples, you know, going right back to Ed Wood uh, yeah. of, of, you know, people who made terrible movies that, you know, were recognized as terrible in their time and then find a cult audience and they blow up and, Next thing you know, people are doing late night showings because, you know, Troll 2 is right. so over Have you ever heard of the movie uh, Southland Tales? I've heard of it. Yeah, that's the, fuck, I might even have watched that once. Was that? It has The Rock in it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I am Fucking deeply yeah, obsessed. That's the, how old is that movie? It's like 10 years old at yeah, this I was point. Say, it's yeah. actually one of The Rock's first movies. Right. And I may do a video on it. I am deeply obsessed with that movie uh as as a creative endeavor that was so bizarre and insane and i respect it so deeply that anyone would try to make that movie mm. it was made by the guy who made donnie darko yeah and right then just, and then he just said i want to make this movie and they're like well what is it you just made donnie darko that made us some money he's like okay here's the pitch it's like a philip k dick time travel thriller set in the era of the patriot act uh the rock is in it with justin timberlake i've also got sarah michelle geller the uh, fat guy from Mad TV, Sherry O'Terry, uh, whatever the main girl is from Parks and Rec. And they're like, okay, but what's the plot? He's like, again, it's like time travel. But, you know, it might be a, a postmodern retelling of the Book of Revelations. And there's a floating ice cream truck and a rocket launcher. And I'm like, I love every part of this. And yeah, that, he, I, I, I have was, such, and that movie is terrible. Let's be clear. Yeah, he was, he was a guy that really confused me. Because, like... The first, uh, obviously, Donnie, Donnie Darko, you know, for, yeah, uh, like that's that's a that's a decent movie. But then he released his cut of it, the director's. Which was cut. almost like worse. Well, it was. It was objectively worse. I think it was yeah. terrible. It was all these like weird, you know, it it it, it tried to give too much background and too much exposition, and and yeah. and, it, and it added it added a lot of time in the movie as well and it dragged and it wasn't as punchy and it was like it added absolutely nothing and that was when i was a little bit like eh, maybe this guy ain't as good as he thinks he is <laughs> maybe, you know and and then yeah fucking southland tales christ I totally, southland tales i totally fucking Just... forgotten about it everyone has i yeah. think that that movie is going to come back and be like the room and I think it will be Maybe. celebrated for the ins the true. It has The Rock and Justin Timberlake in it. The J Justin Timberlake gets a three minute music video in the middle of the movie, mm. and you're like, "What is going on? This rules!" <laughs> and it's not even the whole story. You have to buy the prequel graphic novel. It's part four through six of the saga. <laughs> Did you know I that? It Did you know, no, I didn't, you know I didn't. Southland Tales is like Star Wars. That uh, that movie yeah, is parts four through six. Put every yeah, we have, they have to put everything yeah. into comic books and stuff as well. Like, you have to read the prequel yeah. comic book oh to understand God. ninety percent of what's going on. It is insane. I appreciate the audacity. Uh, even that's the thing is, I love a beautiful failure yeah. almost as much as I love a truly a uh, wonderful thing. A, a beautiful failure, just just the creativity and the nonsense, and somebody 
somebody believing so hard in themselves that they push everything out of their mind and they just go, just do it, just get it. Because so much of my own work has been that way. Uh, when I went to Berkeley with cans of Pepsi, I was like, this is the stupidest idea I've ever had. I remember Why that. am I doing this? Everything about this is a bad idea. And I walk into the middle of a riot and start handing out cans of Pepsi and it's comedy gold. And those are the creative risks you have to take. And sometimes they're gonna be awful. And sometimes it's gonna result in true garbage. But just the fact that you took the risk, I have so much respect for it. I, I love it. Uh, Southland Tales, insane movie. Right. Thank God it exists. No so, one watched this movie. It's like three hours long. So, uh, so the, the, the last question, we're coming up to time. Um, yeah. uh, so I, I, I just wanted to ask, and you sort of touched upon it a little bit with the idea about making movies and, and that kind of thing. But, you know, what, what are you going to be working on, you know, um, immediately? next because i imagine you've had a lot of time you know we're all in lockdown looks like we're going to be in lockdown again so we've got nothing but this you know time to, to time get time and time yeah. yeah i know and i feel guilty about uh having not been at my creative peak and just playing magic the gathering on the internet <laughs> um i'm i'm currently at a point where i get to these points where i have 10 different projects on my plate and i try to figure out which one of them to direct my focus on and i usually fail uh, so there are a number of things in my wheelhouse that I'm working on. I am writing a movie script that I've been working on for a while. I am petting a cat. Hello, cat. Starring The Rock, I hope. Starring The Rock, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's an independent film that uh, at some point I would hope to crowdfund. I also have a friend who is an animator. We have a script that we've been kicking around for a while. He's a guy who's worked at a... Uh, he just worked on uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2, and I believe mm -hmm. he's working on the new Shrek. So we might be awesome. trying to do an animated project there. Uh, as far as YouTube goes, I have a number of, I start and stop on a number of scripts for videos. I have various scripts and various, I mean, for me, I'm a slow, I'm a slow producer because I don't know, I, I get too meticulous with things, but we'll see what's happening. I'm streaming games. See, it just goes down the list. <laughs> I'm working on a, Actually, the, the thing I might be doing right now, though, that I'm really like looking at, I'm going, I would like to get this off my plate. And I know this is a, a hard pivot from what I'm probably known for is uh, I have a card game that I was actually developing. Yeah, you know, it's all, it was on my list, dude, but we got fucking sidetracked with all the oh, don't uh, worry about it. political stuff. Well, I have one card game that actually already came out, and that's one thing. Love this coronavirus, I tell you what. Oh, you can't put that word on. I don't know where you're going to post this. I don't uh, give a fuck. It's on, it's on you. No, no, listen, <laughs> it's fine. Like, I, I don't care. I, all my shit gets demonetized anyway. So, Yeah, well, about a year ago, I actually kickstarted a game called Enemy Weapon. It's kind of like a Cards Against Humanity with uh, not a, a clone. I think it has a very unique twist, and the cards are very funny. I won't show it off right now, but if people want to go to enemyweapon.com, you can check it out. And uh, that was fun. I mean, my plans was to go to board game conventions and try to find a publisher, but God forbid anything in my life uh, followed the plans. of. I mean, I'm sure everybody's plans have been upended at this point, uh, yeah. but I may be trying to contact some publishers. Right now, the board game space is not looking for, too, is not selling so well because people aren't going to everybody's house to play board games. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now, just personal sales on my website, enemyweapon.com. Uh, but I have another game that I was developing for a long time, uh, which I call Dice Monsters. And it's a hybrid dice card game that I put a lot of work into. Uh, I have some, I actually work for a board game company. I'm the lead graphic designer of some games you guys might know, which I will not talk about for various reasons. But uh, I've always loved board games. I've always loved Magic the Gathering and that sort of thing. Yeah. So uh, I'm tooling around in Photoshop, putting a game together. And uh, maybe it'll be coming to Kickstarter later this year if I can really nail down the design. If anybody wants to help me test my game, I have it on Tabletop Simulator. Just send me a, send me a message. We got to yeah, get these I'll, cards uh, balanced. When, it, when, when, it, when it's ready to go, I'll, I'll, throw, out, uh, I'll throw, it, throw it out on my Discord and see if anyone Come wants to Come on by. The grass deck is broken right now. I got a ton, ton. Grass is too good. Fire ain't good enough. But we'll figure it out. We'll find the right balance. Well, well look, I don't know, man. man. I'm always working on everything. I got a million things in the freaking fire if anybody wants to read my terrible book i should finish revising that it's written it's real bad uh but i'm gonna try and make it a little bit better uh just so much i don't know man but that's the thing i love to create i come up with too many ideas and i execute all of them terribly and uh occasionally i strike success and god bless anybody who uh manages to witness my success and thank you all for ignoring my many failures 
<laughs> well, look, uh, I'm I'm glad we finally got round to you know sitting down and having a chat. Like we've been we've been adjacent uh, for a while. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, like you say, well, let me know when you've got uh, some of these projects of yours finished. And uh, yeah, we'll, when the next big thing is ready yeah, to go, we'll 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 get you back on, and we'll uh, we'll 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 promote the shit a out of promotion it. there. Eh? Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm all when about I get, that. when I get the when I get the big Kickstarter going for sure. <laughs> well, d- you gotta do the Kickstarter, right? Yeah, you, you have Kickstarter? to. Kickstarter? Uh, you know what? I never have. I've never I've never produced anything that would kind of warrant it. Oh, now's the time, buddy. Now uh, is your time. Do you know, any ideas though, for cr- I keep trying to find goes. other creators, and I'm like, look, man. I know, I know how to get in touch with the Chinese factory. If you got any ideas for weird card games or whatever else, yes, yes, Chinese not, will make them not, real cheap for you. It's not my wheelhouse. Um, uh, I got videos. I got videos of the sweatshop putting together copies of Enemy <laughs> Weapon. God. And my Kickstarter backers were like, Vito, I'm happy that my game's coming. Can you not show me videos of Chinese women <laughs> like pressing? The, I'm like, it's getting made. Okay, they're all getting paid. I don't know how much. It's fine. It, 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 okay? it, ain't, it ain't much. It turns out they were uncomfortable with me yeah. posting those. Videos. Whatever, it's fine. Uh, so look, uh, that is that is Vito Gaswaldi. You can go and follow him at uh, it's at is it at it's just at Vito, isn't it? I, I would well, let me let me get this right. YouTube. Yeah, it's at Vito Gaswaldi. Um, yes. And you you can find him, which is terrible. Uh, yes, uh, and I YouTube. should change that username. slash Vito. Uh, exactly. He's also on uh, Patreon, which is patreon.com slash the Vito Show. He occasionally yes. streams games on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Vito Show. And if you want to purchase any Vito related merchandise, you can do so at Killdozer.industries. That should kill those about industries. We got some dumb t shirts on there. Yeah. So, I like I, mega t shirts as well. So, again, man, thanks so much for uh, uh, taking the time. I wish you all the success and everything moving forward. And uh, looking forward to the Southland Tales video. <laughs> By ping me <laughs> in my DMs when that's ready. It's going to be it's gonna be titled The Movie That Almost Destroyed The Rock's Career Before It Even Began, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is the truth. It is. It certainly is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah there you have it guys that's Vito uh, go and show him some support thank you for coming on the show and uh, we'll be back with another episode of the Richard Lewis show don't know when don't know who the guest will be but you can be sure it'll be uh, a good listen so uh, make sure you tune in for that Uh, thanks so so much and I will see you next time